Tea is the world's most popular and oldest drink containing caffeine. More than a billion people worldwide have consumed tea. Apart from its great taste and smell, tea has many medicinal and health benefits for us because it contains characteristics of secondary metabolites such as catechins, caffeine, and theanine. They are also called phytochemical compounds and are said to be able to reduce chronic diseases like lung, colon, liver, and stomach cancers, cardiovascular diseases, and also promote general health upon drinking tea. Other than these benefits, these secondary metabolites are said to be responsible for flavour and quality of tea. So wait a minute, why am I telling you this? Well now you know how beneficial tea is, so I am now going to spill some tea on the 2017 study done by Sia and her research fellows towards their focus on how these phytochemical compounds contribute to the tea, their interesting findings, and the importance of their study. Let's introduce the star of the show, the tea tree plant Camellia synthesis. It was first chosen by Sia and her fellow researchers because the genus Camellia consists of a unique system for investigating the evolution and variation of catechin, theanine, and caffeine biosynthesis pathways, which determines tea flavors and processing suitability. Now, since tea has been grown and consumed globally for thousands of years, this means that tea has adapted into different habitats all over the world. Hence, this study also further looks into details of adaptability as this may result in different flavors of tea and qualities worldwide due to its location. The tea tree plant Camellia synthesis is a member of the genus Camellia in the tea family Theaceae, which shares the same genus as the very attractive and popular flower Camellia. In the beginning, they determined a whole genome shotgun sequence analysis with HiSec 2000. This revealed a 3.02 GB genome assembly that is exceptionally large in comparison to other previously sequenced plant species. It also revealed that it contains the highest amount of repetitive DNA. This finding was retrieved through a slow and steady long-term amplification of some long terminal repeat retrotransposon families. LTI retrotransposon families are a group of transposable elements which accommodate high DNA sequence similarities in their coding region. There are two types of LTR retrotransposons, which are TY1 copia and TY3 gypsy, and they make up majority of the genome. Through carbon dating, results show that the retrotransposons have almost simultaneously amplified, and that through comparative analysis between these two types, it showed that both have undergone many retrotransposition bursts over the past million of years because they have very long half-lives. Retrotransposition bursts are rapid amplifications of retrotransposons throughout the genome. Hence, because of these bursts, they lead to a huge extension in their genomic size. Now, do you know why tea is sourced or grown for most parts of the world? It's actually due to the global adaptations of the tea tree. Let me explain. A whole genome duplication represented that defense genes were highly populated in the genome. Previous studies revealed that there was a strong selection for enhanced disease resistance in the tea tree to many habitats across most continents. To investigate this, this study explored defense genes, nucleotide binding sites with leucine-rich repeats and receptor-like kinase leucine-rich repeats genes in the tea tree and compared it to four other eudicots. Results show that the tea tree contained more NBS LRR encoding genes than the eudicots. These genes actually recognize the pathogen effectors that lead to the activation of a plant defense response. Therefore, by having a large number of these genes, it implies selection pressures to respond to pathogens. Additionally, the tea tree contains slightly more RLK LRR genes than the eudicots. These genes play an importance in stress response and pattern triggered immunity, where it can send defense responses for pathogenic defense. This type of immunity is considered as an ancient form of innate immunity in plants, therefore, it is conserved longer in the tea tree and plays a major role in defending pathogens. Hence, this reveals that these genomic features display a strong selection for enhanced disease resistance that contribute to the adaptation of the tea tree in various habitats and stress tolerances. And finally, how do you know if tea is suitable to be processed and is of high quality? A comparative study was also performed to find the genomic basis of tea processing suitability and quality. First, they performed a comparative phytochemical analysis of the tea tree against another species from the section Thea and species from non-thea sections from the same genus Camellia, preceded by a high-performance liquid chromatography. Results demonstrated that there was a high number of catechins and caffeine in the tea tree and other species from the section Thea in comparison to the non-thea section. However, the amount of theanine is the same in all species and sections. It was concluded that an increase in catechin and caffeine would lead to an enhancement in tea processing suitability and quality. 
To conclude, hopefully with the phytochemical, transcriptomic, and functional data all together, it will provide a framework for future genomic studies to be researched in in order to find more diversified flavors of tea, provide significant insight towards protecting natural wild tea populations as they are on the verge of extinction, and also help conserve the tea tree species all over the world.